Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning into another Super Tease video. And oh man, is this class an absolute blast in this recent patch 9.2.5. This class received a buff, which I thought wasn't going to be a big deal, but apparently it was. And this is the Demonology Warlock. We're seeing a resurgence of it, potentially even more powerful than it was at the start of patch 9.2. And I made a ton of content about it. This time around, the Demonology is running with the Night Fae Covenant, summoning in massive armies of demons and having a huge tyrant to deal devastating damage. I decided to couple this class with an elemental shaman to just blast out meatballs and demons at my opponents and it was a good time. I'm currently underway on my gladiator challenge which is to try and achieve 2400 arena rating in 3v3 on every single class and this got me there on my holy paladin. So definitely if you're a healer this is a composition that you really should check out with the paladin specifically you're going to be able to aggressively use your blessing and protections and aura masteries to guarantee spells like the demonic tyrants so that your warlock is not going to be so easily crowd controlled through those moments and utilize blessing and freedom to get them to their target to blast out those massive waves of damage although it is very important to try and not overlap your cooldowns things like your medallion or your most precious resource using these at the same time as your partners is generally considered a mistake you want to be using these one after the other in order to survive the attacks of your opponents but the main threat towards this composition uh, can be melee cleaves rep paladins do a lot of damage and you need to get ready for their avenging wrath and be in a position to trade major defensive cooldowns when that happens the other thing is arms warriors fury warriors mostly fury warriors but in this case it's an arms warrior is the conqueror's banner when that is called in you better be ready to either kite and avoid damage with your portal and your gateway or get ready to die because it's going to be basically unhealable damage. But this composition had a lot of great matchups up the ladder and did so much damage that it just became so much fun. One of my favorite comps at the moment. We're seeing this composition even in tournaments a little bit more as well. So as the, our opponents charge in here, we get a double stun onto both the warrior and the ret to prevent their advance towards my warlock. Would generally say it might be better to save your stuns until they have committed their cooldown so you can crowd control them and now we're in a spot where the warrior has used their conqueror's banner this is the scariest point that a warrior can achieve so we're going to use our demonic gateway and blessing of freedom like we talked in the pregame to get our warlock away from their attackers and then we can use the portal to get escape once again baiting our enemies out into the open and you can see already the rep paladin is just getting destroyed as he's trying to make his way to the warlock we can then push towards the healer as we are left open to use hammer of justice and then we can fear out of this to get the resto druid out of the fight for as long as as possible we're going to activate our aura mastery here with our blessing of sacrifice to kind of extend ourselves through this initial amount of burst damage chaining those one after the other because the offensive cooldowns of rep paladins and warriors can last so long and you want your warlock to feel reasonably stable so that they can stand still and get their legion army going so definitely make sure that if you're a warlock playing with healers that they're using cooldowns on enemy cooldowns so that you can stand still and start getting some damage out once you've kited the initial wave now in this position we're we're getting crowd controlled so i've requested my warlock to use the unending resolve to reduce damage i've used a lot of my preventative measures already and because we got cycloned here we're going to have to use a trinket and a bop the scariest point in the game against a ret warrior is the opener like the first minute to a minute and a half once you've survived past that point it becomes much more difficult for ret paladin teams to coordinate those cooldowns together uh, as they don't always line up at the perfect moment but you can see the advantages of this comp starting to stick in once we've survived that initial wave of burst with our enemies now whittled down to 60% health, 50% health. We've got a fear on the healer. We can charge forward for a hammer of justice and just absolutely blast. And that's going to net us divine shield from the rep paladin. Another part of these demonology compositions that makes them so much fun is that anybody is a target. You can just turn over like a turret and just immediately start laying down suppression fire and prevent your enemies from getting to you. Now, after my walks use that demonic portal, we're going to use freedom so that they can just avoid the warrior utilizing curse of exhaust or frost shock in this case to slow the enemy melee dps from getting back to the warlock while we get into a more comfortable position to start counterattacking. Here I used Divine Shield to break a Hammer of Justice, but it wasn't the enemy's cooldown. So it was a bit of a panic given the cooldown situation of my team that I didn't want to be crowd controlled, but you do need to pay attention. This was a mistake on my part. Pay attention to whether or not Avenging Wrath is active, Seraphim is active, 
uh, Warbreaker for Arms Warriors active. If those aren't active, they're probably not going to kill your partner in just one crowd control. It's going to take more than that. This was a panic moment from the live game, but here comes the Meatball Lottery. This is the advantages of Double Caster is that you go the Warlock. Well, that Ellie Shaman is going to be roasting you on an open fire. We can lay in Judgments. We can lay in Holy Shocks while they're trying to get back to the pillar and really add as much damage when the enemies are trying to retreat as a healer with these types of Wizard Cleave is going to be super important, but they are struggling, right? Like they've been at 50% health for most of this game and we're watching it in slow motion. So the chaos is a lot more than is, is even shown on this video here. Definitely a lot of fun. We're still using our freedoms to chain our Warlock away. We want to charge towards the Druid to try and stop them from crowd controlling. Fortunately, outplayed there by using Fleshcraft to immune my Hodge uh, as I wanted to stop the Cyclone. Needed to be aware of that. Now our Shaman is Cyclone. We could have maybe just won the game in this position. Here our Warlock is stunned with Warbreaker, so we can use Blessing and Protection, get them out of the stun, get the Warbreaker removed. Now they can free cast without being interrupted, get a ton of imps onto the battlefield, get ready to line up another Tyrant, get Fears onto the healer, and this is the main advantages of pairing a Paladin with a Demonology Warlock, is these immunity cooldowns to get them aggressive, get their damage rolling. Our Elemental Shaman is now out of crowd control, is going to be able to rain in a ton of damage as well. We use Soul Shape to pull away from the Druid, stunning the Red at the same time to prevent the reconnect. They use a bop to remove this. They already Divine Shield earlier, so they have no bubble. We've got the Warrior at half health with limited cooldown, so we're just laying in damage. I think I actually use Divine Toll offensively here. Wouldn't necessarily recommend doing that, um, but it does, I think, ultimately net the kill. Look at the meatballs, the hammers, the demons, the imps flying in. Anybody can go down. Super fun composition. Highly recommend uh, that you try it and then that you give it a go. Like we've got another game here where our enemies just get absolutely evaporated. So while they initially start on me, if they try and go on the healer, that's going to be a mistake. Leaving a free casting Ellie, leaving a free casting Warlock. Look at this poor warrior. He's trying to get to me. Demonic Gateway. Escape to safety. He's pain suppressioned. I don't really care about your damage reduction. I'm going to charge in, stun the healer, and then just continue the aggression, continue the assault. We've got our little legion army downstairs on the bottom. We're going to use our Blessing of Freedoms to avoid the melee attackers, which is super fun in this composition because otherwise you're pretty stationary. Um, and we can survive their cooldown swap to me with some just instant heals. I actually got away with pretty, being pretty greedy in that position. But you can see pulling the warrior out into the open, pulling the death knight out into the open is going to cause chaos for them because we can fear the healer easily. We can war stomp the warrior and we can just smack them with crusader strikes and do as much damage as we basically want to in that position. Uh, and then you always want to be pulling your enemy attackers out into the open because as this type of composition, nobody's going to keep up with your firepower. So always bring them out into the open. Those are going to be the best spots to stand uh, when playing this class or playing with a Demonology Warlock. But either way, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that's in, it's intrigued you to give something different a try. I know we're, we're, in an, we're in an RMP world right now, but there are other comps that are a lot of fun out there that can succeed. And and I'm doing my best to expand and see what those options can be. So if you like this type of content and you want to stay ahead of the competition, make sure you hit the subscribe button there. It's just going to let you know when my videos go live. Thank you once again for watching, and I will catch you in the next video.